So first, welcome to that 1870s homestead. My name's Rachel and I have been gardening for, successfully gardening for six years now. And I love sharing everything that I learn. We do raised bed gardening, no dig gardening. And this is my second year starting my own seeds. And I am having good success with a very low maintenance setup. So if that interests you, welcome. I hope you subscribe and I'm glad you found us. It has been about, I don't know, two weeks since I trimmed those cabbage leaves. Well, maybe not quite two weeks, maybe a week. Since I trimmed out, oh, my worm testings got frozen outside. Um, and it's time to pot them up. I don't want to get them stunted in their growth from getting too, like, they just don't have enough nourishment and space to grow. Oops. So I'm just adding some Potting, I had some leftover um, seed starting mix. I'm mixing in some potting soil, some worm castings. Uh, I'm gonna get that all mixed together. Not that this is what you're supposed to do, it's just what I'm doing to use all my leftovers. Any remaining seed starts that I have to start indoors will perfectly start in direct potting soil. They're not like gentle seeds. So that's things like squashes and cucumbers, things like that, that you could otherwise direct sow without a problem. Um, so I'm just gonna share with you guys today my first time getting this far with my cabbages. Like last year, like I said, I killed them all. So let's document the journey together, see what we learn and maybe get feedback from others in the community so we can all learn from each other. And people are always so gentle and kind when they point out, oh, Rachel, you should have done this, or I would have done that, or you're behind, or you're too far ahead of schedule. So we'll see what feedback we get and what we learn from it. And we are just having a crazy cold spring and it's expected to be a cold April. Um, so, yet to be seen what success we have in the garden this spring with our spring plantings and our cold hardy crops. And I mentioned in the last video that if it's not easy and I gotta go through a lot of work to garden, um, I consider myself a lazy gardener and people commented like I would hardly call you lazy. I put a lot of work into my garden for sure, but I don't go to the extremes. Um, I guess I would say like I don't have the big high tunnel um, and I don't know that I ever want one. Um, I'm just if I can't make it work with the low maintenance setup that I have in my house, I probably won't do it. So let me give you an update real quick before we get started on how the celery is growing, what the baby cabbages look like, and then we'll get down into transplanting them. Well, before I get into transplanting my, or up potting my broccolis and cabbages, look at these baby celeries. <gasps> First time ever growing celery plants and they have just their first little true leaves. I'm so proud of them. 100% germination for the most part. This one cell, I only had one come up. I don't think you guys can even see it. It's in the back. But everything else, 100% germination. Seeds come from Haas Tools, highly recommend them. So three weeks ago, I started my seeds um, for my cabbages and broccoli. These are my green cabbages. They, and then two weeks ago, I thinned them down to just two starts in each cell. I don't know if you guys can see those, so super cute. Nice root development, but they're getting too big for their britches in these pots. 
and then the red cabbages similarly and the broccoli very similarly. So we're gonna up pot these today and see how it goes. So I get asked a lot of questions where I get my pots from and I honestly didn't buy anything that I don't think you guys probably already buy. And for years and all the years prior to me starting my own seeds, I bought starts at the big box stores, you know, or greenhouses. And I would go and buy flats and flats, knowing that one day I wanted to be able to start my own seeds. I kept everything. I kept all of the little pots that everything came in, whether it was like the little two inch cells up to, you know, five gallon pots. I keep everything. Like, hopefully you guys know that by now. <laughs> I keep all my store bought glass jars. I keep everything. And knowing that someday it's gonna come in handy for something. And when it came time to having all of the gear to start my own seeds, I really didn't have to buy much of anything. I did buy a few cheapy grow lights from Walmart last year and that's it and I'm glad I had the foresight to do that so if you're interested in or thinking about the idea this year when you go to the, your greenhouses or you buy your starts save all your pots and a lot of people, like if you have friends and family that do it every year, even if it's just perennial flowers and things like that, ask them to save those pots for you. So um, that's where mine came from. So I'm just getting these pre-filled so that I have a lot ready. So when it comes time to transplanting them, I'm getting ready to just make an assembly line. So Todd was just reminding me that somebody asked, what is a true leaf? So when a seed germinates, it's gonna put off its codling leaves. And that's these first two leaves. No matter what plant it is, whether it's a flower, a tomato, anything, it's gonna put off what's known as codling leaves, little baby leaves. And then the next set of leaves are the plant's true leaf, the first set of true leaves. So these are the first sets of true leaves. And this one right here has its second set just coming out. So those first leaves really don't do anything other than to get the seed started. I'm just squeezing the cells to loosen them. I really don't think cabbages like their roots disturbed that much. And unfortunately, I have some roots growing in between the cells. So we're just going to work these guys apart really gently. And then I'm going to work these plants apart really gently. Try not to disturb them too, too much. I'm being like super, super gentle. It might not show up on camera. And let me dump out some of this soil. Maybe I shouldn't have filled that too much. All right, so I've got a pot half full of soil. I'm going to make a hole all the way to the bottom to get those roots in. And now with the cabbage, you can bury it up to those first sets of true leaves. So let's go in and we'll gently work around that. I'll bring it down and show you guys. Okay, so I've planted it all the way up. Oops. And pack it down just gently, not too, too, too tight. And fill it a little bit more. And it's time for me to get some... Um, all right, so there we go. It's time for me to get some fan, some air circulation on these babies right now. So they um, strengthen their stems. So once your first sets of true leaves come on, you do wanna consider getting some wind going on them. So I've just put up a stand up oscillating fan in front of my seed stand, and that works really well. Here we go. 
So this is going to take me a while. I'm going to get through all of these. We're starting with our green cabbage. Then we'll move on to our red cabbage. And see, this shows you how like super gentle. I should have probably did this like a week ago. Um, but, you know, life just gets busy. So hopefully they'll forgive me and they'll recover just fine and not throw too big of a hissy fit. You can pour me another glass of wine. Mari, make me a drink. Pretty please. We're just gonna have a wine and plant night. How about that? Do you have some open somewhere? No, I just drank the last bit. So I finished up all of my green cabbages. That's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, 16, 18. 18 green cabbages. We're moving on to the reds. I think there's just two green cabbages that, ooh, it was tricky to get those roots apart. So we'll see. Yeah, should have done this at two weeks after planting for my growing conditions because these roots are tightly wound. Some of them come apart really easily and others, I feel like, ooh, I'm doing something wrong breaking them. Okay. Hopefully what I plan on doing that I'll share at the end of them is how I'm going to, cause this soil, while it's moist, it is by no means damp. Um, or damp, not moist, however you want to say it. I'm going to um, water them in with some diluted fish emulsion for a good feeding because it's been a week since they've been fed. And I've purposely kind of been holding off because last week at feeding time, I didn't feel that they were quite ready for up potting. That feeding gave them a good boost. And so they'll get their second feeding today. One more pack of red cabbage and we are done with red cabbage. Down to the last of it. So exciting doing the broccoli now. Oh my goodness, I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> Todd's helping uh, transport them into the bigger trays. You're not doing anything with the celery? No, nothing with okay. the celery. And oh my goodness. So exciting after last year, completely killing them all, like killed them, every single one of them. And I'm just, took my time this year, thought about it, what would I change? Look at that little guy. So much broccoli in our future, babe. <laughs> yeah. That's exciting. Like just tonight, we what, or one of our dinners recently, we asked if we have any broccoli. I'm like, no, no broccoli. No, I think that's a meal coming up later this week. Oh. We're gonna do like a Korean beef. Oh yeah. So we have to use carrots, but I, that's okay. But it would be nice to be able to harvest enough broccoli to be able to put up several, you know, freezer bags of broccoli mm -hmm. for us. I wonder how it would freeze dry. Oh, I don't know. Why would we want to do that? I wouldn't want to freeze dry personally until I have excess of anything. <laughs> I was just thinking. Yeah. You know. oh, My first so thought nice. with broccoli always is you freeze it because oh, that's, the, that's yeah, like that's the, how way, it comes. <laughs> the way to preserve it. Yeah. And you can't really can broccoli no. unless you make broccoli soup. But right. I was like, well, if you freeze it, but what else could you do besides that? I guess oh, freeze, freeze dry. dry. Yeah, I guess so. I guess freeze drying would definitely be more secure. Nice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
just enough? You no, know, we're not going to have enough oh, room. No. I can go back out and get another one. I think we got some more of this size. Okay. Yep, so that is my number one tip for any of you just desiring future homestead inspirations. So if, while you are growing where you are, it's just from Roots and Refuge likes to say, save everything, build up your stash. So when you are in that space or you have that place to grow your own, then you've got everything you need. And I'll keep using these. Like I've got a couple set aside that are just all broken up to shreds that aren't I can't use anymore. And I'll just keep using these until they're not usable anymore. Which probably for these little cheap plasticky things might not be that long. This is my second year on my seed starting cell trays and then potting up pots second year or so. <laughs> I know last, for my tomatoes, I use the Solo Cups. So I've got all those saved. And I look forward to um, just a wonderful harvest. I'm going to believe and believe and believe it's going to return exactly what I'm expecting. So I'll be back with you guys over at the greenhouse, and I'll show you how I water them in. I saw it there today. The Snow glories are all coming out. <gasps> are they? Yeah. Like the actual blues? Like, there's a couple that have tiny flowers. Oh. But the bulk, like 90% of them, are still just the leaves. Just sprouting. Mm. All right. How about that? Let's grab our juice. Where do you see my juice? No. Mm -hmm. I had to rearrange. Where did I put it? Oh, I found it. Okay, so I have, I teased the other day because it says barbecue sauce on it. It's not barbecue sauce. It is Neptune's, Neptune's Harvest, like all-purpose liquid fertilizer. I think it's just like a generic tomato veg. Um, it is great to feed young seedlings. So, um, or you could use fish emulsion too. I find that this doesn't stink as much as fish emulsion does inside your house. So I um, don't have this down to a science per se, but I have my little tiny uh, measuring cup and the very bottom, three tablespoons or 0.5 ounces. And I'm going just um, about a half of, half of 0.5 ounces, so 0.2. 0.2 ounces in a half gallon jar. Um, so it's usually like for this age, a tablespoon per gallon. So I'm probably doing a little bit too much, but they handled it just fine a week ago. So what I do, if you guys can see me over here, is I just fill this with water. And that's it, just to get the jar all clean and shiny of all that fertilizer. And then I'm going to fill this with water. All right, and that we have a jar. You can see how dil diluted that is now. It's not much, but those plants need serious watering. So I'm gonna give a quart to one tray and a quart to the other tray. All right, to make it simple, I just remove one cell from my tray and I'm gonna pour that in as carefully as I can. Okay. And then they'll just um, bottom feed. Same over here, take one out and pour the rest of that in there. All right, guys, thank you for coming along to my seed starting adventure year two. And I encourage you, you're never too old to learn something new. I'm teaching myself all the time, new tricks, new ways, and um, putting best practices to, uh, 
to my use that I find works for me and my uh, seed starting adventure. And I hope to share some tips with you guys along the way. Talk to you guys later.